Hey everybody, welcome back for part two of Amazon's AWS reInvent conference coverage. If you haven't seen part one, you can click over here and I'll put a link there for part one. I'll give you a minute so you can check it out. As I mentioned in part one, this show in its eighth year has the capacity for 65,000 people and offered up over 3,000 different sessions. And this year, transformation was the main theme. And the big takeaway here was that you should be moving more aggressively to the cloud. And Andy Jassy in his keynote kept coming back to this theme. And much of it was aimed at senior leadership. He laid out several key points in accelerating your journey. Number one is senior leadership team conviction and alignment. Number two is have top-down aggressive goals. Number three, train your builders. And number four, don't let paralysis stop you before you start. And while I don't agree that uh, it should be pushed from top down aggressively, I do agree that senior leadership teams must be in alignment. And while it all sounded good, I think Andy Jassy has a little bit of a Pollyanna view uh, towards the cloud. But Andy Jassy did make a really good point in saying that cloud does innovate infrastructure faster than on-prem does. And I think this is one of the reasons why in the end, cloud's going to win out. So AWS trotted out a whole lot of logos and they certainly have a lot of big companies on their platform. And one of the big points that they continued to hammer home was not only do they have the widest range of products, but that they have the deepest products in those categories. And while other cloud providers may be satisfying some of those check boxes, they don't have the kind of depth that AWS does. Jesse noted that they have over 175 products. I count over 191 but I will say a lot of their products look more like product features than individual products. So I would take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. And he managed to take a few digs at Oracle like he usually does, but this year was a little bit different because he also took a stab at MS SQL, saying that people are fleeing that platform. And I think this speaks more to Azure's recent growth than it does a massive exodus off of MS SQL. Jesse did say that about 50% of Windows workloads in the cloud run on AWS. And he did reference the IDC uh, study that said t by 2020, 80% of workloads will be on Linux, which was another dig at Microsoft. As always, there were a ton of announcements. On the compute side, in addition to Intel, AMD, and ARM, they've been building a lot of custom chips. And with their acquisition of Annapurna Labs, they have grown their chip making capabilities. And uh, their line of Nitro chips brings about the promise of disaggregating the CPU a bit. Their plan is to offload key functionality that would be in the CPU to specialized chips that are designed to accelerate those specific functions, while at the same time offering the opportunity for them to scale these things massively, while also isolating security challenges. So they announced several new instances, M6G, R6G, and C6G, and AWS Graviton2 instances. And another new instance that they debuted was Inf1. So 80 to 90% of the cost of machine learning is in the inferencing. And these Inf1 inferentia instances offer ultra low latency, 3x throughput, and are integrated with all the major frameworks. Now they also pointed out that 81% of all container workloads run on AWS. And now they have extended their popular Fargate managed service to EKS as well. There were a bunch of announcements on the networking side with AWS Transit Gateway Multicast, AWS Accelerated Site-to-Site -site VPN, AWS Transit Gateway Interregion Peering, and AWS Transit Gateway Network Manager. On the security side, they unveiled IAM Access Analyzer and granular access controls for Amazon S3 access points. So AWS offers a lot of database options and they're clearly very proud of this. They feel that they have a database that's specifically purposed for any kind of workload that you may have. 
And the sentiment is, is that there is no one general purpose database that's gonna satisfy all kinds of workloads. On the data warehouse side, they made over 100 updates to Redshift. And now they're offering federated queries across a range of their products. In addition to the RA3 instances, which allow you to scale compute and storage separately, they're using their Nitro chips to offload some of the compute to the raw storage to enhance performance and save you money. They also introduced Data Lake Export to simplify the process of reintegrating data into the data lake, as well as an ultra warm tiering solution that dynamically tiers your data across storage to optimize performance and cost. On the machine learning front, they made a lot of announcements as well. They announced the web-based IDE, Integrated Development Environment, SageMaker Studio. They also rolled out SageMaker Experiments, which simplifies saving all your experiments and artifacts. SageMaker Debugger is another new tool which helps you interpret your models. And SageMaker Model Monitor, which helps you manage concept drift. Now they're also trying to tackle the huge challenge of AutoML with SageMaker Autopilot, which takes CSV uh, training data, automatically transforms that data, selects the best algorithm, builds up to 50 different models, allows you to inspect and compare models, and ultimately allows you to deploy the optimal model. And they brought some of their core functionality from their retail business over to AWS with Amazon Fraud Detector, an ML-based fraud detection tool, and Contact Lens, which provides ML-based contact center analytics. Amazon Kendra provides machine learning, natural language processing, search for the enterprise. The previously announced Amazon Outposts have now reached general availability with EC2, EBS, ECS, EKS, EMR, VPC, with RDS coming soon, and S3 also coming soon. This comes in either an AWS native flavor or VMware cloud on AWS flavor, which is going to arrive in early 2020. One of the challenges of cloud has always been the proximity to the cloud. And now Amazon is addressing this by leveraging outposts to create local zones, which reside in Amazon managed buildings to move the cloud closer to the business. This will help them achieve single digit millisecond latencies and is currently available by invitation only. And lastly, they're jumping on the 5G bandwagon with AWS Wavelength. And through a partnership with Verizon, they are offering single digit millisecond latencies for edge applications with M6G, R6G, C6G, Graviton2, and Inf1 instances. And they are currently previewing this in the Chicago region. One other cool thing that was on the floor was uh, the science fair area. So they brought in uh, a lot of folks from inside of AWS who have created interesting projects utilizing AWS technologies, and they created an area for them. There were a couple that were really interesting. One was an accelerometer that was attached to the cloud that could go into police cars as they drive around a city and using machine learning to identify when the car is traveling over a pothole so that they can identify and map those potholes so that they can fix them. Another really interesting one that I saw was uh, an artificial pancreas, which keeps track of blood sugar levels and keeps them stored in the cloud so that your team of physicians can keep monitored on your situation, but also so that they can better predict what your insulin load should be uh, throughout the course of the day. And they had everything from quiz shows to uh, web-enabled uh, magic wands to a Thanos glove that you tried to snap by moving your hand through a optical recognition uh, field. But the great thing was it gave a lot of AWS employees both an opportunity to uh, play with some of the technologies, but also a way to get themselves to AWS reInvent. So that was a lot of announcements, a lot of stuff at AWS. Um, and if you dig deeper, there's even more to explore there. But I uh, only have a limited amount of time in these videos, and I wanted to give you some of the key highlights from the show. So thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, please click the like button, hit subscribe, and click that bell icon if you want notifications when I post new content. And I will see you in the next video.